Folks, welcome into sportsbookreview.com. This is Draft Central for all your needs. Round one was very exciting. I'll be your host today. Real quick on this video, Donnie writes out along with my partner in crime, Jeff Nadu, the big man on campus. A lot went down on day one of the draft, day two and three. Still a lot left to be desired and to break down. But if we just get into day one, winners and losers, a lot of topics that we're going to bring up today. So I do want to bring on Jeff on the show. Topic number one, Jeff, who had the best day number one draft wise for you in your opinion? I would go with the Green Bay Packers. I really like what they did. I mean, you got to look at the fact of Donnie. They basically moved back four spots, got a first-round pick next year, and they took Jair Alexander, a guy that they probably could have taken uh, at 18, 14, wherever. They addressed the need right away. This is a guy that runs a 4-3-8-40. This is a guy that really provides you with a nice nickelback option. Now, we know nowadays how important a slot corner is in the NFL. Uh, they not only addressed this last year with Kevin King, but now you got your guy that could play on the outside and on the inside in Jair Alexander. Uh, plus, uh, you load it up for next year as well. Uh, they have a pick early in the second round, I believe 41. I did think they'd go out and address maybe the receiver position, maybe the offensive line, but you got to like what they did. A big time A, Jair Alexander quickly, Donnie, not only can guard and play in that slot corner, but he's very good against the run. He's able to uh, anticipate runs and quarterback runs. It's a really good quarterback. I had him very high. I had him rated in the top 20. Uh, this is a great pick. And you got some stuff for next year. Yeah, best day for me, Jeff. Real quick, three teams. I like what they did. Uh, the Denver Broncos staying put at five, not panicking, taking the best player on the board that was available. That was Bradley Chubb. Also, the Cardinals, Jeff, hanging clean at 10 and grabbing uh, Josh Rosen at that time. I think it's a very good spot for him. Staying out on the West Coast, you know, you get that dome environment, still out good weather, one of his comfort levels. I like him in that spot much more than I would like him with the Jets, which brings me up to my third team, Jeff, that I think had a great day. The New York Jets staying put at three there, trading up earlier in the offseason to get to that spot landing darn old at that spot that's a clear winner for me if we move on jeff obviously when we talk about winners we want to talk about some losers now again folks keep in mind it's only day one of the draft you can correct some of these issues on day two and three but we're going to analyze round one there jeff who came up a bit small in your idea on day one of the draft jeff yeah, I mean, as these days went on, and I, I continue to kind of understand what exactly went on, the New Orleans Saints, this is one of the worst picks I've ever seen at this decision. I mean, Donnie, you, keep this in mind, all right? You went ahead, um, and you didn't go up and get Bradley Chubb. You didn't go up and get Quentin Nelson. You literally, Donnie, gave up two first-round picks and a fifth-round pick for a guy that probably won't be ready to start this year. He's a project. This is going all in, and this is basically saying we don't give a flying hell about what goes on in the future. You still have not addressed Drew Brees, and you're not going to have the ability not only this year because you don't have a second-round pick, and next year you have no first-round picks. So you're really putting all your eggs in a basket of a guy uh, that's very raw. It doesn't make any sense, and I got to ask you, Donnie, if I said to you right now, I want Ryan Kerrigan, you tell me, all right, give me two first-round picks. I would tell you you're absolutely nuts. There's really no player in the NFL other than like a really high level J.J. Watt kind of someone like that that I'm giving two fresh round picks up for. It's a hideous decision and an awful thing that's going to set them back. And you have a guy that's 39 years old at quarterback that you have no plans of the next years to address. Yeah, no, I mean, and just to counterpoint off of that, they didn't have anything in the background. I mean, there were, all the quarterbacks were gone at that point. You're looking at swapping first-round picks. You do move back a little bit, and you give up a one. But it was a need position for them, and you're right, just to play off the whole Drew Brees situation. He only has two to three years, good years left in the NFL. They're looking to push all their chips on the table and try to steal him one last shot at glory. We'll see if it works out. But you're right. It's a it lot was of, an expensive uh, part to pay. It's a lot to, to, to really – it's a lot – you're going all in on one guy who, Donnie, frankly, I don't know if he'll be ready to play at this level this year. He might be, and that would be obviously helpful. Well, he's a, he yeah, but see, that's where um, I disagree. I disagree with you a little bit on that. This kid is the second best pass rusher in this entire draft. Why would you think he wouldn't be ready to get out on the field? He's a complete package. He's a dominant player. I, I think it's also has to be made clear. The competition that he faced was not up to as far as everyone else. Plus, I don't know. I just look more of a project. I'm not so much worried and mad about 
doing it, I guess. It's just the fact that you gave up so much and you really have set yourself behind and put yourself in a position that over the next two or three years, it's going to be, you're going to be hard pressed to be able to address the quarterback position. Now, I hear you on that. If you're looking at a couple other spots, it's easy to pick on, Jeff. We picked on Cleveland all last night or yesterday during the show, going over, you know, Mayfield at one and then taking Ward at the four position. I think you could have spent the other time much more wisely than that. Another team I want to look at, Jeff, which we talked about, it's not so much the pick or the guy I don't like. It's the Dallas Cowboys at 19. Now finding out today, Jason Witten looks like he's going to retire. Hurst was on the board at the 19th spot. You went linebacker, a guy who sort of flagged in some areas there, depending on, you know, stinger neck issues to see how that's going to work out. But I I think the Dallas Cowboys could have done much better with that point there, Jeff. Number three topic we're going to get to today. Jeff, your steal of the first round, who was it? Uh, Taven Bryan out of Florida. Donnie, there's a, a guy by the name of Kent Platt. Ken Platt is basically a statistician. He came up with a score called the relative athletic score. And basically what it is, it's a player measurement score that basically de deciphers athleticism as far as every player in the draft. It basically is a, a combination of just very simple, rudimentary combine stuff. You look at this year, uh, Donnie, out of 1,088 players, Taven Bryant was 11th as far as scores at a 9.91. .9 to put that into perspective, Donnie, that would make him one of the most physically gifted players at the defensive tackle position since 1987. This is a physically gifted football player that can play not only on the outside, but can play inside. He fits perfectly with that system. Son of a Navy SEAL from Wyoming, great size. I love this pick for the Jacksonville Jaguars. You put him in with Yannick Ngakwe and Calais Campbell, Malik Jackson, and you know Fowler and all these guys. I mean, these are this is the kind of uh, guy that uh, is just going to thrive. What a specimen. He is. That's the steal of the first round if I'm the Jaguars. Yeah, I like it. You know, you take a position, Jeff. It's not one of need, but you're taking the best player in the available that's going to fit your system. I do agree with you there. Mine would be number 10 overall, uh, Rosen, to the Arizona Cardinals at that point. I just think, to me, Jeff, and I know we talked about it a lot previously on some other shows, when you're looking at Josh Rosen, I had him as the second best player in the entire draft. You know, obviously, outside of Saquon Barkley at number two, I thought Rosen overall was the best quarterback. I think he fell to Arizona. And watch out for the NFC West, Jeff, that we take a look at. That's going to be a pretty good quarterback division we hope, over the next couple of years. We'll go to our final topic and pointer. Hey, Donnie, Overdrafted players for round one. Yeah, what's up? Real quick, with the Jags, you mentioned uh, not really a need. I, I For someone, dis I disagree a bit. I, I think, you know, he's a guy that can plug in and play on the outside and play inside. I think he's more of a fit on the outside. Uh, but I'm excited. I mean, Donnie, you look at that front seven. There's no front. There's no defense better. Maybe Minnesota, but uh, what an amazing group, man, down there. I, I, I'm i almost jealous to not be a fan of the Jaguars. What a group. Um, but yeah, uh, sorry to interrupt. Just want to throw that in. No, no, it's, it's a good point by you because when you have a strength, which is your D line, and you say, you know what, we could probably use something elsewhere, but why not take the best player available on the board that's going to fit our system and scheme there? Saxonville Jaguars, that's not you know something you throw around lightly out there. They're going to come after it, and they just re-fortified that front seven. One of my favorite defensive league, like, you're right, right on par with Minnesota. Out of that, we'll see if Blake Bortles can hold up his end at quarterback there. But getting back to the topic, Jeff, over-drafted player of round one. Who do you think went maybe a little bit too high, and you could have waited on a guy a better deal on yeah I have two here um one is obviously going to be Terrell Edmonds I thought this was a absolute moronic pick uh, by the Pittsburgh Steelers look is it a need yes uh but it's about this eighth or ninth guy that I would choose at that position uh Terrell Edmonds is a guy that you could have frankly Donnie at number 60 picked and uh been fine um I don't really quite understand doing things like this. These little stunts that these teams pull. Um, there are plenty of high-level linebackers, uh, or, or I'm sorry, uh, corners on the, at, at that position that you could have taken. Um, I don't really understand um, the, the decision. It's a need. They have a need at that position, but I don't really understand the, the decision. The other one, uh, I would go with Colton Miller. Um, to me, not only the need wasn't there, uh, the uh, player you chose. Look, if you're going to take a lineman, um, Will Hernandez was there. Tyrell uh, Crosby was there. Uh, Col or, uh, Connor Williams was there. Um, you take a guy that you could have got at 41. Um, I don't really understand. They had bigger needs to me. I think the problem for Oakland was they wanted Roquan Smith. 
uh, didn't happen, and I think they made a bad pick here. Um, I would have traded back and went a different way. Maybe got a pick in the second round, two, you know, have two picks instead, you know, and pick someone different here. Uh, I don't understand this pick at all or uh, Terrell Edmonds. Yeah, two overdrafted for me. We'll get back to that Dallas Cowboys bandwagon with Van Der Esch going 19th. Again, he's a good player, but I think he could have been dropped down a little bit lower. And I think Dallas could have used their service, their needs somewhere else. But also, Jeff, 27th overall to the Seattle Seahawks, Richard Penny, one of my favorite players in the draft, one of my favorite kids to watch over his career at San Diego State. He's going to be a good NFL player, Jeff. But again, we always lose that poker analysis there. You could have got him much later. You could have traded out, went back into the second round, picked up some extra picks, and still got him, Jeff. If we take a look at this draft, Draft day one, Jeff, I'm going to leave you here with a couple of comments that you would like to get in. Day one of the draft, your thoughts before we get out of here. I think it was fun. The, the penny point is well made because, Donnie, when you're deciding on a running back, it's not a particularly good idea to do it in the first round anyway, unless you have a transcendent talent, a Hall of Fame kind of player, uh, or just have to have a running back. The Seattle Seahawks aren't in general need for that position. Plus, um, you know, you could have drafted uh, Rashad Penny much later. Rashad Penny was a second or third round pick. He's a nice player. He's going to help you out. But um, it was a huge reach. As far as um, that, I think the big thing was, I think it was pretty typical. Um, either a huge reach or a great pick. I thought Derwin James dropping was a, a big surprise that the Chargers really fulfilled the need there. Um, I thought the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with an interesting pick. I thought they would have went Derwin James or a corner. Uh, they decided to take Vita Vea, who really just makes that defensive line and that front seven just fantastic. Um, but the big story is the Browns. The problem is, Donnie, but the new good problem is they screwed it up. But now yet again, they have another opportunity here right at the first few picks of the draft in the second round to get some real good football players. Um, we'll see if they screw it up or not. I'm really looking forward to uh, number two and to number three, those drafts, and, and obviously the rest of the rounds as well. Uh, really exciting time. No, it should be a lot of fun. Day two, day three, still coming up here with sportsbookreview.com. Make sure, folks, you're checking into at SBR Sports Picks and also sportsbookreview.com. A lot of good stuff going on the site. For everything NFL and NFL draft needs, make sure you keep it locked here to sportsbookreview.com. I'm Donnie Wrightside. He's Jeff Nadu, the big man on campus. Join us for another selection on Monday when we come up and review the entire draft days, one, two, and three, winners and losers. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.